Well, back again. We are um, into this session in circuit analysis one, okay, course. Um, this session will be, uh, I'll be talking about operational amplifier, or as we know it for short, it's op -M, okay. It's an introduction course. You will learn more about uh, op -M in electronic classes later on. Okay, so but this class, so I just give you an introduction, general idea, and we're doing only ideal op M. Okay, so first of all, operational amplifier op M. Okay, is um, it's an electronic device. Electronic device. Okay, that if you operate it under a proper circumstances. Okay, it will behave like a voltage control, voltage source. Okay, okay, with a very high gain. Okay, right, the symbol the symbol of op M is this triangle. Oops, hold on. What happened? Oh, what happened? Okay, triangle. Okay. Um, three major uh, so called terminal. This is the output. Okay. Well, the one with a positive sign terminal is called the non inverting input. And the one with the negative signs is called the inverting input. Okay. Right. So um, the voltage, okay, the voltage. Well, when we measure the voltage, we of course would measure it against with a reference point of ground somewhere. Okay. So this is a ground. Okay. Then, of course, this would be your V out. Okay. There is a voltage also, you know, from the non inverting uh, terminal. It's called V input 1, right? And for the voltage drops from the so inverting input, there's a voltage drop, well, there's a voltage that can be put in there too. Let's put V uh, input 2. Okay, um, the when we talk about so the difference between the two, the difference between the two terminals here, right? We call it V input. Okay, so therefore we can say that V in is equal to V input one minus V input two. Okay, that could be also the case. This is the case. Okay. Um, the word non-inverting input, non-inverting input, right? Uh, as the word said, if you say non-inverting input, if you put the signal you know, at the input like this, okay, at the input, the output would be pretty much the same, right? It doesn't invert. Well, the magnitude could change. Okay, but the phase stay the same. But if you put it as at the inverting input, as the word said, inverting, you may get at the output, you now the inverting effect, like this. Okay, op amp itself, the op amp itself is an electronic device, okay, to operate an op amp. Okay. There must be a power supply, <coughs> you know, to it. Okay, and you know, and how we do this, how we connect it to this is like this. So actually, op M. Okay, op M can operate if it's co connected to a power supply like this 
BCC. And this, like this. Okay. And of course, this is the signal input. Okay. I want to. Okay, there could be I out if it's connected to uh, some kind of a uh, load or something. Okay. Um, however, however, okay, since we sort of keep it in mind that um, the op amp would need VCC, okay, the power supply to it for it to work. When we look at the problems, we would see that you will see only this picture, the triangle one and the three leads. You know, two in and one out, okay, for the output, okay. The characteristic uh, of the op M, the characteristic of op M is like this, okay. So this is V out, right, V in. As you say that, you know, it's sort of like um, acting like a voltage control, water source with high gain. So therefore, V in is like the one that um, responsible for, and of course the gain, and of course the gain for the value of V out. The characteristic of the op amp is that it has a linear part, okay, linear region. This is called the linear region. Okay, where V out is equal to A V in. Okay, then. The beauty of this is that the op amp would saturate, the voltage V out would saturate, okay, where you are at the value of your the power supply, like this. Okay, so this is called positive saturation at this region. And this is the negative saturation region region like this okay so and of course the op amp itself nowadays doesn't look like a triangle at all okay so it looks like this uh, it's you know look like a chip okay the black chip that you see on your computer board you know your circuit board okay so this is an example of a 741 type op amp okay so in four one, so that would be if you imagine those black um, chip, right? And there is a so-called this metal silver color uh, terminals, okay? If you compare and it's numbered, so you have to look at your data sheet numbers that comes with the device, okay? And then you know which leads is what, okay? So for in this case, if we compare. Compare it with the symbol, op M symbol. Okay, like this. Okay. Okay. This would be V plus, you know, VCC, and this is V minus, right? The negative of VCC is supplying to the, the bottom there. Okay. So the first one here is balance. Okay. The pin number two is the inverting input. So therefore, if you come here, inverting input is a negative sign. So this is number two, number two. And number three is non-inverting input. So therefore, this would be lead number three, okay. Number four is a negative power supply, so it's lead number four. Okay, number five is, okay, something for the balance. And number six is the output. So this would be number six right here. And number seven is V plus, it's VCC. So this is number seven. Okay. So this is an example of what the op amp looks like nowadays. Okay, it's not chip. Okay. Now, um, to model the op amp, okay, and we say it's a voltage control um, water source. So if we uh, put it model so you can understand it more clearly that how it behaves. So let me enlarge this. Okay, so three terminals, the two input, right? This is your V in. Okay, this is your V out. Okay, so inside on the input, 
it's connected to R input, R in, okay, R in. On the so-called output terminal, it's model as there's R out and a voltage control voltage source A V in like this. Okay, so therefore your V out depends on your V in. A is called the open loop gain. Open loop gain. Right? And the values, the values of this, okay, the values. So we're gonna look at this ideal case. And of course, the reality, okay, the actual case. Okay. Okay. So the values for R in, R in, ideally, we want it to be like infinite, very large, very large. But in actual value, it's about 10 to the fifth to 10 to the 15 ohms. Okay. R out, we want to be very, very, very small. Okay, in the real world, it's about 10 to 1,000 ohms. Okay, and the gain, the open loop gain, the open loop gain, we want it to be very high, infinite, but the actual is 10 to the fourth to 10 to the seventh. Okay, these are the values. Uh, in in our case, in our in this class, we will only deal with ideal of m ideal of M okay the rest you will do it in electronic course okay later on okay now for the ideal of M ideal of M let's look at the values that's given to you okay if we say that there's supposed to be a current I1 and I2 right there okay going into the op M okay um, for the ideal case R in supposed to be very 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 high R is supposed to be very, very high, right? If R is very high, that means that the current, it opposes the flow of the current, okay? So therefore, it's, uh, the current is very, very small or none at all. So therefore, we say that we will conclude that, okay, number one, okay, current into the input terminal Okay, R zero. Okay, so I one equal to I two equal to zero M because R in is so high. Okay, so that's um, one characteristic. So we can assume that okay, we are talking about ideal of M characteristic. Okay, so first one currents into input terminal are zero. Okay. Second one, second one, okay. So let's say that, okay, say that, uh, well, R out is very small, R out is very small, like zero. So that means that if there's a current flowing, current flowing, right, um, your voltage would be very small, even though there's a current flowing through it. So this R out would act like a short, right? If you imagine that there's no voltage drop across this R out, that means your V out is actually nothing but a V in okay so your V out becomes like A V in right now look at A the open loop gain the open loop gain we said it's infinite very 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 high very high okay well if it's very high then it's it's sort of like how can how are we going to use it we're in the real world right that um Things are being controlled and limited. Okay, so we want to put our output voltage to remain bounded. Okay, so therefore, if we say that our V out, V out, right, is equal to a V in, but we want to bound our V out to be certain values. But if a is very, very, very large, if a is very large, right? Then V out would be very large if you put any V in in, right? Multiply V in multiply something really large, your answer would be very large. So therefore, to control it, we will say that our V in 
Okay. Then our V in should be very small. Should be very, very, very small. Right? As if it should be pretty much like close to zero. So that if it's very small, close to zero, you multiply by infinite, it will give you some values. It will give you some values. Okay? So therefore, we said your V in has to be very small. V in must go to zero. Okay? Well, but V in, we say that V in is equal to V input 1, right? Minus V input 2. Okay? So the voltage at um, the non-inverting and the at inverting, the difference, okay, should be near to zero. So it means that your V input 1 must be equal to your V input 2. So therefore, the second, second okay, characteristic of ideal of M is that the voltage at legs, the input legs are equal. Okay, V I1 equal to V I2. Okay, the voltage at the input terminals are equal. So therefore, please remember this, okay, remember this, that the two ideal op M characteristics are the input currents on both terminals are zero, and the voltage, okay, at the two terminals are equal. So these are the rules, okay, for ideal op M. And in this course, we will do only ideal case, okay, ideal case. And I'm going to give you only two simple examples, okay, of how to analyze uh, op amp circuit, okay. All right, so therefore, let's start. Okay, if I have this circuit right here, op amp connection. Okay, this is the case. I want to find V out. What is V out equal to? Right here, the output voltage. Ideal of M. Okay, so let's start. So first we're going to imagine that you know, lots of imaginations uh, in the electrical engineering field because we don't even see electrons flowing by ourselves, okay? So, let's say, from the ideal of M characteristic, first of all, we'd say that, well, let us look at this, this node right here, right? At terminal, the positive, the non-inverting terminal, the input, okay? The value of this, this point to this reference is equal to VI. Right, V I. So therefore, if I if I say that well, this is terminal V one, right? This is V two. Okay, it's the voltage at the input terminal. But in this case, we know that V two is equal to V I already. Okay, and from the second, the second rules, okay, of the ideal characteristic, well, V two supposed to equal to V one, so equal to V I. So we know that, okay, so V1 is also equal to VI, okay. Second characteristic saying that there is no current going in here. So this is zero amp going in. There is no current going into the op amp, zero amp, okay. But we have to imagine that there is, there seems that there's supposed to be power supply, right? So there's a power supply is right there. But we know that it's being supplied, so we're not going to draw anything. And of course, if we have if there is something that's supplying it, right, there's there going to be current flowing. 
So we're going to assume that since it's not given in the problem, we're going to assume that, okay, there's a current going here. Let's call it I1. Okay. Current goes through here, I1. I1 goes here, right? And when it gets to this junction, well, 0 amp current cannot go in here, so therefore it goes up to here. So let's call it I2, just for the sake of this different one. Okay. It's actually I1. All everything goes in there. Okay. So therefore, at KCL, I'm going to write KCL at point V1, right? We have I1, right? I1 going into V1, V1. I2, I1 is going in, I2 is leaving, so I1 minus I2 equal to 0, right? Equal to 0. Or is it I1 equal to I2? Now we're going to find the voltage, correct? Not voltage, actually. This is like V out, this is V1. Okay, so I'm going to change this. As if I'm using nodal analysis. Well, I1, I1, I1 would be equal to what? Okay, I1. I1 enter, uh, goes past through R1, so therefore there's a voltage drop here, correct? V. Okay, so the voltage difference between, between this point and this point is, well, this point is zero, right? Zero, zero. It's sort of a zero ground reference point. Minus, at this point, the voltage at this point is, this one right here, so V1 divided by R1, okay, equal to I2, I2, what's I2? I2, current I2 goes through RF, so positive, negative voltage drop across RF right here, okay, the potential dif difference across RF is, well, the voltage at this point, right, this point on a positive terminal of the drop is V1, so V1, right, minus, right, the potential at this point, which is V0, right? This is V0, so minus V0 over RF. Okay, so therefore, when you do your math, you get V out equal to, okay, V1, right? Oh, but also, wait a minute, V1, V1. V1 is equal to V i, V input right here, right? So therefore, this is nothing but minus V in over R1 equal to V in minus V out over RF. So therefore, V out is equal to V input minus RF over R1, V input, or do it nicely, V out is 1 plus RF over R1, I think there's a minus one missing somewhere. So it should be plus right here. Okay. So therefore you get the answer to be like this. Okay. So therefore this is your answer. Okay. So you can see that with these configurations, okay, where your input is at the non-inverting input, okay, your answer V out, okay, would be a positive, right, positive doesn't get invert, okay, if you put in V input as positive values, your answer will be positive, right, V out would be positive. If you put V in to be negative, your V out be negative. And how large is your V out is depends on this factor right here. So this is like your gain. Okay, 1 plus Rf over R1. So you can also design your um, system, your op M, you know, according you, by changing your Rf and R1, and you get the so-called the, um, the gain that you want. Okay, so as you see that um, the sign doesn't change from the input to the output, so therefore this configuration is called the non-inverting amplifier. Okay, non-inverting amplifier. So that's the case, the first case. So the second one, the second one, okay. Second example, let's look at this one. So V out, okay. 
F. Uh, F, F actually stands for feedback. Okay. Okay, so all, again, we want to find V out. Find V out. Right? So let's see. The, from the ideal characteristic, well, the voltage here, what do you think? It's connected to ground, right? So that means this is zero volt, right? And from the characteristic equa characteristic of ideal of M, the second one, V at this point, right, is equal to V at this point. So this is also zero volt, okay? Current cannot go in, so I equal to zero, I equal to zero. Zero M, zero M, right? Zero M, okay. Right, so current come out from the source, I1, right? Come to this junction, cannot go in because of that first um, ideal characteristic law, right? So that everything goes up here, it's called IF. Okay. So again, let's, we can write KCL you know, at that node, okay? So I1 equal to IF. I1 equal to IF, okay? So I1 is, well, it's a potential that's across R1, which is we input minus zero, right? Because we established that this is zero M, uh, zero volt divided by R1 equal to IF, right? IF is the potential difference across RF. So this one right here is zero, right? Minus the potential at this point, which is V out. So minus V out over RF. So, therefore, you will get V in over R1 equal to minus V out over RF. So, therefore, V out would be equal to RF over R1, right? V I and minus sign. So, this is your equation for this configurations. So if your V input, V I is positive, right, your V out would have a negative values also due to minus R F over R1. If your input is negative, it become positive. You got you got you inverted, you know, the sign. You invert the sign. Okay. The magnitude is of course um, the amplitude, the enhancement of it, amplifier of it is by the gain R F O R1. So therefore, since you invert your input values this is this configuration is called the inverting amplifier inverting amplifier okay so you can see that your signal input is connected to the inverting input terminal okay all right so this is um, two major ones that uh, you need to try to grasp. Uh, most of the time when we deal with op-m, uh, we approach it with nodal analysis first. Okay, so I'm going to do some example. Uh, let's do this one right here. I'm going to have this example for you. So, Vs. Okay, we want to find V out over V S. This problem, V out over V S. Okay, let's start with the idea of M. What do we know? Okay. Well, you know that, well, the terminal here, right, the voltage this terminal is Vs, so that means this terminal is also Vs, correct, from the ideal characteristic rule, okay, 
Well, current cannot go in there, right? So there's no current going in here, so i equal to zero. Okay. So somehow here also i is equal to zero. Okay, no current going to the ideal of m. Okay. So how do we do this? So we want to find vr, which is right here. Okay. Vs, Vs. Vs, if you say that this, is all, this point is Vs, well, this is the same node, right? So therefore, this is also Vs at this node. So that means the voltage drop across 5k ohm is Vs. Agree? Okay, now let's look at on the V outside, V out on the other side. Imagine there's a current flowing. There's a current flowing. Okay, current flow, flow here. It flows into here and flows here. Okay. Well, in, let's look at this node, right? So the current flow here, passing 40 k ohms, come to this junction, two ways, up and down. Right? But does it go up? Hopefully you said no. Okay? Because the, we say that, well, the idea of M said the current cannot go in there. So I is equal to zero, cannot go up. So everything goes in here. Correct? So the same current passing through 40K and 5K. Okay? It means that 40K and 5K are connected in series, right? So it's like 40K and 5k are connected in series, correct? And this is ground, right? Well, if we said that this is point A, so this is your point A, okay? And we said that the voltage drop across 5k ohm is also equal to Vs right here, right? Well, point A here also is across the 2k ohm, and this is connected to ground. So therefore, point A, right, 2k ohms, and it's going to ground also, so same point. We out. Okay. We want to find V out over Vs. Hey, but V out is actually parallel to this, right? It's cover from from up here, including 40k and and this is the same point, they're parallel, right? So V out is cover the whole thing from 40K and 5K also. So if you look at it, it means that if you write K, if you write down um, KVL for this loop, you write down KVL for this loop, you would get that V out composed of V across 40K plus Vs, V across the 5K, which is Vs. So that means V across 5K or Vs here, right? actually divided out from v, un, v out. So therefore, if you write down voltage dividers rule, right, to find voltage, well, Vs, right, is equal to Rx, which is 5k ohms, divided by, well, it divide, it, Vs come out from, divided out from V out, so V out, and V out take care, V out give itself to 40k and 5k in series, so 40k plus 5k. So therefore you have Vs equal to 5k over 45k V out. But we want to find V out over Vs, right? This is kk cancel 9, right? So therefore V out over Vs is equal to 9. So this is your answer. Right? So this is one example. Okay. One more example. One more example. Okay, about this one.
find eye, find the current, okay, passing through these three ohms. This three ohm connected to V out right here, right? So you can assume that there's V out right here, right? This is V out, same node. Okay. So let's see. Let's, where should we start? Okay. With the ideal op M characteristic, well, there's no current going in there. So 0 M. 0 M, right? No current going in there. Okay, when then the rest of the circuit, how does it flows? Well, there's an 8 volt here, so the current come out. Current come out. Right, 8 volt from 8 volt I, right? Passing through 4 ohms, come to this junction. Well, cannot go into the op M, so everything goes down here. Right? So one loop. Okay, so the voltage, you want to find another ideal characteristic rule is that the voltage at the terminal, input terminal of op M are equal, right? So let's see if we can find the values. The previous problem was like given as what? Vs already, but this one is not that, right? So this is the terminal for the V, the voltage at this non-inverting terminal. So therefore I connect to this node with respect to ground. So therefore it's a voltage drop across this 12 ohms, right? So that means this we input the first one, right? On the non inverting terminal is the voltage drop across 12 volt is the voltage uh, that would fit into the op M. So, how do you find V1, VI, VI, right? Well, the current go into this loop, right? So, there's a voltage drop here across 4 ohms, voltage drop across the 12 ohm, which is VI. Okay. If you write down the KVL, right, it's just one loop. It's it's you drive KVL, you know. So it's well, eight volt would be equal to we drop across four ohm plus VI. Huh? VI is you know is part of eight volt. You know, it's sort of like uh, divided up from eight volt. So I can find VI by voltage dividers, right? By voltage dividers. So VI is equal to RX, which is twelve ohms. Right? Multiply by, well, it divided from 8 volt, so this is 8. Divided by R total, 8 volt give itself to the 4 ohms and 12 ohm in series, so 4 plus 12. So therefore, Vi turned out to be 6 volt. So therefore, you know that the voltage here is equal to 6 volt here, 6 volt. And from the characteristic rules, ideal characteristic rules, right, VI at this terminal must be equal to this terminal also. So that means, which is right here, right, so this is 6 volt right here. So if it's respect to ground, so that means 6 volt is the water drop across the 2 ohms. 2 ohms. Okay, so we can get that information now on the so-called input side. Now look at the output. We want to find I, right? The easiest way to find I is Ohm's law, right? I is a current passing through 3 ohms. So if you know V out, which is the watch drop across the 3 ohms, right? Divided by 3, you get your answer I. So we want to find V out. Well, where's, what's V out then? Well, we have noticed this is 6 right here. And if you imagine again that if there's a current flowing here, right? Current from, come from somewhere, come here, pass through 4, right? 4 ohms. Well, come to this junction. You cannot go into the op M, correct? So therefore, everything goes down here again. So that means um, you can think of it as, well, that means 4 ohms and 2 ohms are, again, in series to each other, with each other, okay? Where you have the voltage drop across, the 2 ohm is equal to 6 volt. And the top of 4, right, okay, it's actually connected to, to the 3 ohms. Right, this is V out right here, and three ohms, and this is V out. So again, right, six volt divided out from V out. So if you write down the Ohm's law for the volt, uh, not Ohm's law, the voltage dividers, okay, using voltage divider rules 
to find the voltage drop across the two ohms, right? Because it divided out from V out, it would be, right? Well, you have Vx equal to Rx over R total times Vs, right? Vx in this case, you know the answer already, which is 6 volt. 6 volt equal to Rx is 2 ohms, right? Multiply by Vs in this case, of course, is V out, right? Divided by V out, share with whom? We know composed of voltage drop across the 4 and 2, right? So therefore, 4 and 2 connected in series. So therefore, you get 6 equal to 2 over 6 times V out. So you have your V out. So V out is 6 times 6 divided by 2 equal to 18 volt. So now you get your V out. So therefore, I is right here, V out over 3. So 18 over 3 equal to 6 amps. Ah, finish. See? So that's um, some idea um, when you have a problem with um, so-called op amps. Okay. So I think this is um, some examples. You don't get bored with the listening to, uh, to the lectures, right? So, okay, I give you um, some homework um, later on, some other problems, okay, through other um, ways. Thank you.